Jay's Two Cents here coming at you with a vlog. I'm gonna be working on the test rig back there in preparation for a video I'm doing for Friday. Something went bad over there, and I'm glad that I figured it out today, otherwise Friday's video would have been screwed. But if you follow me on social media, then you would already know what the topic for today's video is. So there's obviously some incentive on why you guys should be following on social media. But the pump has died in the test rig only one month after using antifreeze in it. Is that the reason why it died? I don't know. We're going to find out. This is the antifreeze mixture with uh, some emerald green dye that I put in there because I want it to be a little darker. I don't think the dye had anything to do with my pump dying. A little bit of a pun there, I guess. But my Lang DDC has died. So what I've got to do right now is I'm going to swap it with another Lang DDC. Fortunately, I've got a ton of these pumps laying around, but I want to show you guys what's actually happening here. If you listen closely, you'll actually hear this pump start and stop three times. I don't know what it's doing, but it's just kind of looping through there. So obviously, there's a, there's a short or something is causing this to click off. I don't know what the problem is. That's where we're going to open it up and find out. Now, I'm also not saying that the coolant is what caused the problem, but I'm kind of wondering if maybe something here might have caused this O-ring. There's an O-ring that goes around right here that protects the actual blade or the impeller from the electronics. This is the O-ring right here. It actually just came out, but I don't know if that's what failed. It could just be electronics that failed. It just could be a random failure. I don't know, but we're, that's the whole point of today's video. But take a listen. But the first thing I have to do is actually drain the loop before I can even get in there. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I'll also take the opportunity to get rid of the tubing that kind of dyed itself purplish red color here. That's still weird to me that it dyed itself this color after the green coolant was in it. This tubing never had red in it. It only had green. So weird. Now the cool thing about this being a DDC pump is I can disassemble this without having to take it off the side of the rig. I just flip the rig on its side and have access to it from the bottom. Now I'll be honest when I say that I was pretty damn frustrated when I turned on the system today and it stopped me from getting the work done that I had to do for a product video that's coming out on Friday. But at least we can look at the bright side. We get to take stuff apart, we get to figure out what went wrong or try and figure it out anyway, and I get to make a video for you guys where you can see that things aren't always perfect. Things are never perfect, actually. And when it comes to water cooling, yeah, it's that much more of a pain in the ass when something goes wrong. But I still enjoy it. I'll still do it. I, I guess I just like punishment. Here we go, last screw. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Not so easy. And take off the pump. Well, feels dry. It was dry in there. O-ring appears all right. It's a little bit different blades on this one than that one though. Huh, it's actually quite different. The O-ring looks fine. So, all right, at that point, we definitely can't not call this fluid related. Interesting that there are two different impeller designs though. I mean, everything else about these pumps are the same. If you take a look at them here. You can see this one's a PWM, obviously. It's got the four prongs on there that are soldered. This one does not have anything right there on the PWM side of it, but they are the same. I could also just replace them. These, are, these just sit in here with a magnet. These are magnetized. So they basically just hover and spin. So I just pulled that one out. I could literally swap them if I wanted. And then that one could go in there and then we're good. I'm not sure if there's any benefit to this one over that one. I think I'm gonna go with this one just to see what happens. So here's the O-ring right here. Everything's perfectly fine with it. I'm very confident in saying that this has obviously nothing to do with the coolant. The new pump's already in there. Here's the thing. Let's go and do this. Let's power this on and let's see what happens when I try and run it. I think we're just going to see it kind of do little, just like little quick jumps of power and nothing's actually happening. And if it works out of the case, then it would be weird if something just caused it to randomly short. Let's check it. 
Yeah. Well, it works just fine outside of the casing. Well, I'll be damned. I'm glad that it's not bad. That is so weird. I don't know how it could have been shorting. Huh. So here's my theory. This is a typical cover you'd find on one of the DDCs without any of the custom tops or anything on them. You can see there's a part right here where the wires have to pass through. Now, when I look closely at these, I can see where it looks like they've been smashed, but it doesn't look like any of the wires are exposed. But all it takes is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of exposure. Like, if you can't even see it with your eye, it could still be enough to cause a short. Now, when you push it in the plastic housing right here, it doesn't actually kind of smush against it like it does on the Alpha Cool uh, housing. So I think that that might be it. This one's got a little bit more of a gap for the wires to go through. And I think over time, it just eventually created some sort of a short that way. But I'm happy to say that this pump does indeed still work. This is actually a really good opportunity to explain to you why you shouldn't run your pumps dry, even though you just saw me do it. Do as I say, not as I do. Now these guys actually have a, uh, a really nice bearing that's built in right here on the motor. So these are actually floating. I mean, as I showed you, they're just magnetic sitting in there floating on like a, like a fluid bearing, if you will. The fluid that goes in your system is what actually causes these things <clears throat> to have a gap between the actual spinning impeller and the housing. So that's why you definitely don't want to run them dry. So I guess the question moving forward now is whether or not the new one is going to have any sort of a problem with pinching. I mean, I could end up using this plastic housing and getting rid of the heat sink one, but the heat sink actually gives some cooling aspect to those electronics on the bottom of the pump. Those can get really, really hot. So I guess we just have to put it back together now and see what happens. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other impeller type in here. Um, I shouldn't even do this, but I want you guys to hear the sound. This is what that different impeller type sounded like in here when it's running dry. Yeah, that's bad. It's really bad. Well, I think the pinching uh, thing I was talking about is definitely what was wrong because now the new one's doing it. And I even started to smell that little familiar blue smoke smell, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I might have just smoked this pump, literally. Uh, it appears to be it's this metal housing. So I might put the plastic one on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, try and see if I can salvage this. If not, we know the other one's good, right? I mean, that's a good thing. If you guys have ever fried anything electronic, then you know that smell. So just as I thought this metal piece right here is pinching on here, you look closely, you can actually see where it is squishing the wires and that's what's causing us to uh, have a short. I'll be honest, I'm really happy that it has nothing to do with the antifreeze that was in the system because I know a lot of you are running antifreeze and I really didn't think anything was gonna go wrong in this system. I still would say, don't run glycol-based coolants with PETG rigid tubing. In fact, all of the manufacturers of PETG tubing say don't use glycol-based coolants with them and there is a lot of glycol in antifreeze for automobiles. But this system has no PETG in it anywhere and it would have been really weird if it somehow dissolved a rubber O-ring which was part of my concern, but that doesn't appear to be the case at all. So my assumptions were correct when I thought that this might have been causing a pinch and it was. And unfortunately it killed this, the replacement pump and the original pump works fine after being pinched, which is funny. Maybe it's because it killed the PWM or something in the other pump. I just have no idea. In fact, let's take it apart and look real quick. There we go, right there. There's <laughs> no doubt. I told you I smelled magic smoke. If you've ever smelled it, oh man, it's funny. This little, this little burned component right here, you can see it, look at that up close. That little burned component right there made this entire room just smell so disgusting. It even kind of puked all over one of the coil packs right there. Anyway guys, time to get out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this video by putting the system together and playing with my new Rhino uh, motorized slider to give you some beautiful shots of this. It's a very pretty test bench. I like this test bench, the Praxis web bench. It looks so damn good. It's interesting though when the problem turns out to be making sure that you have a nice snug fit between two parts that mate together. And I'm not talking about guys and girls. I'm talking about the pump housing and the reservoir to make sure you don't get a leak. Well, unfortunately, in my case, it ended up causing me to, uh, to short out the pump. Oh well, guys, enjoy this epic B-roll, and I will see you in the next one.